Start here when there we go. That was quick. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, everybody. Happy Friday. Um, amazing day, amazing week. Uh, amazing person, Anthony Wynn is in the house. Anthony. Good morning, everybody. Proud to be here. Proud to be part of this KW family. Uh, it's it's a great, um, not only environment to thrive in, but just great people, great culture. I felt it right when I stepped in the office. Uh, Nina in particular, Emilio, Kim. Can't say enough about Kim and, and Manny. This is, Manny's the reason why I'm actually here. And I can't wait to bigger bigger things here. Anthony, see, Anthony always starts with giving shout outs to other people. That's just his uh, one of his uh, strengths. Uh, and, and that's why we, we connect so so well. Not just that, but many other things. So, Anthony, give us um, uh, give us the story about who Anthony Wynn is, who he was, and how you became who you are today. Uh, thanks, Manny. So I have a I have a model that says it's, it's never too late, right? It's never too late in life. And uh, I started my career a little bit later in life. Uh, I worked at Corporate America at Spokio in uh, 2016, well, actually 2014 to 2016-ish. Uh, I worked cold calling, oddly enough, realtors, right? I was cold calling realtors to try to sell Spokio data to them. I was calling Miami, uh, Florida, uh, Texas. And uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but realtors are the most rudest people when you try to cold call them, right? <laughs> when you, especially if you try to cold call them to sell them a program or anything like that. So I would just use tactics like, hey, you know what? Joe Schmo just closed five deals using this program. You don't want to be left out the dust. So I was doing that a lot. And I was a top, I was a top producer there. And I said to myself, you know what? I want to get into real estate. This is something I think that could be beneficial to my career, right? But I, I'm approaching, like, I think I was turning 38, 39. I was saying, was it too late in life to kind of start a new career? So shot in the dark, I, I believe in everything is the universe, number one. Um, everything is through God. So, you know, I, I took a shot in the dark. Uh, I applied to this job ad on Craigslist. Craigslist ex 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 existed back in 2016. So I, I, I applied for a job and it was finding flips. So just oddly enough from doing flips, it transitioned to uh, real estate. A gentleman uh, that needed help with a cobalt banker, he just acquired a cobalt banker. He was like, you know, Anthony, you're you're great at speaking with agents and kind of getting deals. Do you mind if you start this brokerage with me? And this is me knowing nothing about running a brokerage, by the way, right? This is 2000, I would say 19, 20-ish. And shot in the dark, uh, I was able to grow that brokerage from 25 agents to over 200 in less than about a year and a half. So um, it's all about organic growth. I'm a really organic person and you can't force any relationship, you know, on anybody, right? Even with agents and, and with our clients, especially if they don't want to work with you, it's no hard feelings, right? There, there's going to be someone that is going to want to work with you. So I realized that when working with agents, we're all tough here. It's a tough market for everybody, even from the very beginning. When 2021, when everything was hot, it was still tough, right? We also had challenges. So nothing is easy especially in our career, in our in our field. If it was easy, everyone would do it, right? But the challenges I found from growing Cold Banker organically was how can you help someone thrive? What's your value? What's the brokerage's value, right? And, our, and clients would ask us ourselves, well, what makes you different from any, any other agent, right? So there's just so many layers on top of uh, building a brokerage and building teams. Uh, but, you know, I was very proud of that family. Um, I left it recently to be over here to start a new family, which uh, I'm looking forward to. But, you know, that was my career in a nutshell. Uh, early on, uh, I produced, I think my first year, I did 20 units. Um, and that was all blind, by the way, not knowing anything about real estate. And I think blind uh, blind luck was probably the best thing on my side during the time. But after that, I kind of, you know, used that as my value proposition, right? And um, and it took me to different avenues, like getting on television, um, working with athletes. I see Nina, our all-star here, doing amazing things. And that's something I encourage you guys to do is like kind of like, you know, see what our top producers are doing, like Emilio, Nina, and kind of like pattern uh, some of your, your your work habits, really, because it starts with your work ethic and your work habits, right? And um, if you don't have action and plan, uh, nothing would really happen. So, Anthony, hold on for a second. Um Thanks for sharing. That was Anthony uh, in a nutshell, uh, you know, 90 seconds, pretty much, and a lot to to uh, to uh, uh, consume right there. Um, and and the, another thing about about you, Anthony, is that you 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 have this ability to simplify everything. 
uh, even it's it's it was you know a, a journey of, of many many years. You're like, oh hey, this is just how it is. And the cool thing about that, it's not that you're 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 um, trying to package it in a different way that will uh, show people that you know hey, it's easy or what have you, but it's the self belief, right? And you're a person, uh, you you you're a person of faith. You're also a person that uh, um, you have you're very strong up here. You're very mentally strong. Right. Tell us about that, about the connection with yourself and how you uh, through that you you thrive and help other people. Yeah, you know, I, I believe in um, helping. If you help one person, you actually help 100 people. Right. That's that's my mindset. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's difficult, guys. I'm not going to lie to you, you know, being as an agent or being as a leader to wake up and do the same thing over and over again. It, it becomes redundant in a sense. Right. But how do you set that spark where you wake up you're like, you know what, I'm going to change somebody. I'm going to change one of my clients today to get them into a, an investment or to a home of their dreams. How do I change the mindset of someone who's been renting for the past 30 years and don't believe that they can actually achieve an American dream, right? So that's like some of the things that I think uh, agents are like kind of like uh, struggling with is like, how do I stay self-motivated, right? It's very difficult. Uh, being accountable to yourself is huge, right? So with me, it's I'm all about um, manifestation and vision, right? So prior to every single week, I just write down my goals, like two, two or three goals that I just want to set, simple goals, right? It could be something along the long lines of, you know what, I'm going to sign up for a new dialer, something as small as that, right? And actually going through with it and learning it and doing things like that, right? Something small task first. I know it sounds really crazy, like, hey, you know what, what if I don't like to cold call Anthony or what, don't, what if I don't want to door knock? What can I do to, to spark my business up? And that's when you kind of take a look at your business and say, you know what? Anthony might be great at door knocking. Emilio might be great at cold calling. What's my super strength, right? And I feel like a lot of us don't know our super strength yet until someone else kind of like figures it out with us and says, hey, you know what, Anthony? Or you know what, Emilio, why don't you try this? Why don't you try this? And it's okay to fail. I tell that people all the time, you know what? We're so scared about failing and looking, looking like we're not winning to other people's eyes. And that's, you know, 90% of that's the, that's the truth, right? We're just worried about what this person thinks about us. Or, hey, I'm not great at that. And they're going to laugh at me if I try it. I don't care. And I tell my agents or the people I coach, don't worry about that, right? Because if you don't take the chance, you might not get that listing. You might not get that opportunity. Or if you're, you're, if you're linking up with a community uh, event or an organization, why not just ask them, hey, can I do this with you guys? Because I believe in community. If you want to spark up any any type of business in your in your uh, in your sphere, you got to start with the community, your immediate community, or the community that you are uh, aligned with. Right? It could be a boys and girls club, it could be your church, it could be a sports organization, it could be anything. But you have to align yourself within community to grow. Right. And no, I I appreciate what what you just uh, said earlier because uh, you know if every person would. Um, measure or, or make a decision to take action uh, based on other people's opinion, then probably almost everybody would have been passive all the time, right? So it's about that, uh, you know, be be brave enough, be, um, be living in yourself. And it's much easier if you have a very strong sphere of people and, and support system, people like yourself uh, in, in our life to, to keep pushing forward, right? That's the only way to succeed. In that capacity, um, tell tell me about uh, iconic. Uh, tell us about iconic, about the brand and, and how it came about. So uh, I started uh, iconic. Uh, I think two thousand uh, late two thousand and twenty two, no late two thousand twenty three actually. Uh, no mid two thousand twenty three. It was with Paige Turner. Of, I don't know if you guys have heard of Paige Turner from HGTV. Uh, she was a good friend of mine. She's my sis, one of my sisters, my family members, and uh, I was on the show with her. And she, I recruited her to Cobo Banker, and uh, she wasn't recognized as Variety's like up and coming agent or whatnot. I said, you know what? Uh, why don't we start a sports entertainment department? You know, because Cobo Banker, I don't know if you guys know, we're also known as Old Will Banker. Uh, <laughs> so we're just trying to figure out how to be, become more hip, right? And um, we came to the conclusion there's not a real sports and entertainment department other than uh, Keller Williams, you know, and looking hindsight, I should have made the move back then. <laughs> but um, no, we started uh, Iconic and what the idea was to educate athletes and entertainers about how to finance their, look at their finances and build generational wealth. Because if you look at the average athlete, uh, they actually will retire within five years. 
right? Uh, a lot of them don't have a lot of financial literacy if they don't have the right agents or the right family members around them. And you look at the uh, the kind of case studies like Antoine Walker, this gentleman made 200 million and blew it all within 10 years, right? And now it's like essentially doing like uh, hosting gigs, commentator gigs, right? So we don't want our athletes or people that we know to run into the same scenario. And Paige at the time was a component of like, like you know, let's help these people out. Especially, you know, we look at them as being on television or being on the on the field. But guys, they're just normal people just like us, right? Who just needs direction in life. So we started uh, Iconic Sports Entertainment. I, I see Nick here. He's one of the VPs there. And uh, shout out to Nick. He just got two uh, listings from LA Kings and uh, Mighty Duck. So shout out to Nick right there. A hardworking guy. Uh, he's doing things out the ordinary. And um, yeah, it started from just an idea uh, to on paper. And then we did a launch party uh, in downtown Los Angeles that attracted over 100 people, uh, a lot of celebrities, a lot of people on HGTV in the sports world. But yeah, it was just like that. It goes back to my model of, of it's never too late in life, right? Because I thought, hey, it's been done already so many times, but how can we do it? It doesn't matter. I mean, if you do it, it's your it's your stamp, right? And it's your name on there. It doesn't matter if someone else is doing it already, right? So uh, yeah, we started Iconic and we're going strong and we're redoing the team over here at KW right now. We're about 10, 10 agents strong and we're looking to grow the team a little bit more. But yeah, the, in a nutshell, that's how Iconic hatched. Yeah, I love that. Uh, and and uh, I mean, I can clearly see the the, the path as well uh, of uh, of the the growth uh, fueled by the passion, right? Uh, it's it's always a mix of the vision and the passion that drives that um, on a, on a daily basis. What um, what other things like how did you uh, grow yourself also uh, in or around the industry, right? To to complement that. Uh, that niche because the reason I'm asking because some you know, a lot of people ask themselves, okay, you know, SNE, you know, sports entertainment or luxury or uh, first time home buyer, builders, this, that, whatever specialty they want to go, commercial, what have you, it's all legit. But how do you, you know, place yourself? How do you get there? Uh, you not just say, hey, I want to do something, you also get yourself embedded in that uh, community, uh, literally, like you're doing things very. Um, you know, uh, highly involved in that on a regular basis. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, like uh, I'll, I'll say, for example, luxury, right? So uh, I cracked the luxury uh, market in 2021, 22. Um, I, what I did was uh, I just piggybacked on people, right? I piggybacked on certain listings. Um, I was able to get uh, one of my first luxury listings was a 2.3 million condo off Santa Monica. And that was just by chance, really, you know, and I piggybacked that. Uh, and I got assistance from Jade Mills. I don't know if you guys know who Jade Mills is. She's like the number one agent at Cold Banker and Luxury. And I just kind of picked her brain, you know, and it's okay. It's a shot in the dark, really. Some agents will share secrets with you. Some agents won't, right? It's just like actually cold calling. Um, oddly enough, I cold called Jordan Cohen. I don't know if you guys know who he is. Uh, didn't share too many nuggets, but, you know, I, it's kind of like shooting your shot, right? Like a DM. All he said was, hey, you know what, man? Just make a lot of contacts. And, uh, you know, just don't be afraid to be said no to. And that was coming from Jordan and he didn't have to do that. But what I'm saying is like, you got to piggyback with someone who's doing it at a high level. Um, you know, so Jay connected me with Michael Atnew, which is one of my great, great friends. He's a VP over at uh, Cold Banker Luxury. And from there, I was able to do a lot of content with him. He was able to introduce me to certain players in the game that was part of Luxury. And I was like, hey, you know what? I think I could do this on a high level. And it's all about self-belief, really, because if you have the mindset, if you can't do it, you're already lost already, right? You have to be self-motivated, passionate about what you do, and believe in yourself. You are the brand. You know, it doesn't matter what what brand you're, you're attached to. It doesn't matter what brokerage you're a part of. You are you. You're one of one. So, um, you know, just like piggybacking, you know, that I don't know if you guys follow music, but um, back in the day, you know, um, this is a bad analogy to say during this climate, but like, Diddy would actually put certain artists on each other's record to blow up, right? So mm -hmm. it's kind of self thing, same thing in real estate, you know? If you <clears throat> are looking to co-brand yourself in any kind of capacity, whether it be sports entertainment, luxury, piggy whack with an agent and be their uh, mentee or whatnot, right? And that's what I essentially did with uh, with Michael Atnew, the whole Cobra Banker luxury brand. It's all about just piggybacking and just trying to align yourself with people. The players are already doing it on a high level. I love that. It's, it, it's very smart analogy, by the way. I, I do remember when artists start to do like either singles at some point or uh, full albums, and it's all mixed up with other artists. And you see it today, it's like, you know, 
uh, it's expected of them to do some of it, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the, the, again, excellent analogy. So today you're basically positioning yourself to be that individual, right? Uh, you're you're both running, um, running your 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 team, your brand team, the luxury iconic sports uh, uh, SNE, and uh, I've seen in action you're you're an excellent mentor and a coach to people uh, in two aspects, right? As a mentor and a coach, the difference is that I consider mentor to be more on that spiritual, mental capacity, and a coach is like great. Here here are the tasks. Right. Uh, here's the contract, etc. How, um, uh, what, what kind of invitation do you or, or message you want to put out there to whoever's watching and we're going to watch later about, hey, uh, that's me, Anthony. I'm I'm your person to go to, and and why? You know what? We all have to be selfless in a sense, right? And it's really hard because we're we're in an environment where we're all sharks essentially, right? It's sink or swim, and in, in some in some cities or some markets, it's either you know, you got to go hard or you have to be very aggressive, right? But there's room for everyone to grow here and there's room to partner up and there's room to actually just, you know, dominate in groups, right? And I think a lot of it is um, what I've seen, especially at the management level, is we have to leave our ego at the door. <clears throat> it's very hard to say that because, you know, we are, like I said, it's kind of like, it's hard because we are the self-brand, but if we don't leave the ego at the door, our clients can see that at the very sense, right? They can know that, well, I don't want to work with this agent. He has a little, a little ego, right? I don't care if he sold 200 homes a year. I don't want to work with them, right? So we have to humble ourselves sometimes, even with our clients or our teammates, right? They want to work with winners, but at the same time, they want to work with people they can get along with. And I, I say that message with people because if you run into a jam with a client and you come very humble from a humble standpoint, and if you talk about price reductions or you talk about things that need to be done with the, within the home, they're willing to listen. But if you're coming with, hey, I've, I've sold 200 homes before, I've done this, I've done that. Well, how come you can't sell this home since you're a hot shot, right? They're going to come with that mentality. So in a sense, from the very get, you just gotta, you have to have to lead with your heart, more or less, you know, especially if you're trying to build a team. You know, no one's going to want to work with someone who's who thinks they got it all figured out and and they don't want that energy, really, right? You know, it's we have to be sensitive to energies as well, right? We say that because we want to be treated as such. Same with the clients, same as team members, right? Uh, and I think that's one of the secrets, I think, uh, that I've seen superstars convert listings is they just come up, like, they just ask a lot of questions, right? They don't, they leave that ego at the door automatically. When they walk into that listing appointment, that ego is hung up on that little, little mantle right there. So I think, uh, in a sense, we just got to lead with passion, being humble and just leading uh, with your heart, really. That's just like the secret sauce I've seen with agents. I love that. That's that's true. And, and I, I know it's the same thing. It's uh, a lot of top, top producing agents there. Uh, they're also humble. Uh, not everybody, but the majority that I know, they're humble. And like you mentioned, uh, in order to be successful, I think in any any kind of industry, you need to have to be a better listener. And as you mentioned, know how to ask the right questions. That's really the key to success, right? Uh, so thank you for sharing that. Um, what what do you think <clears throat> in today's industry, uh, ever changing industry? That's that's our that's our jam, uh, an opportunity. What do you think is the biggest challenge for most agents? The biggest challenge is comparing yourself to other people right off the bat, right, and just saying, you know, uh, I see my I see my guy come in here and he's killing it right away, or see. I see this person, you know, I don't know what they're doing, but they they just closed like two transactions this month. And I think the biggest kryptonite to all agents is just the comparison to our business, to their business or what they're doing, right? And I think in hindsight, I did that a little bit in the beginning of my career, right? I saw a couple of agents that are just blowing up. I'm like, dang, I wish I could do what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And that's not my, my, my skill set. That's not my strength. And I think we're doing ourselves a disservice if we're just trying to constantly compare ourselves or measure our success to other agents, other brokerages, or, or things like that, right? I think we got to grow. If you're if you're trying to develop a niche, first and foremost, you have to just do, you have to measure yourself against yourself, right? It's always you against you. But then the same token is if you're aligned with a great office like this one, you can tap on a Shira Dunn or you can tap on a Nina or you can tap on a Emilio, right? And say, hey, you know what? I have a question, you guys. I see that you got that listing. Can you share some of the things that you did that was different than, than what I'm trying to do, right? So I think in hindsight, like just comparing yourself to other people, other agents, we already lost already by doing that, right? We just have to share our skill set and ask for uh, feedback, right? Honest feedback. Hey, this is what I'm doing on a cold call. Do you mind 
sharing what I'm doing wrong, you know, especially this, this climate right now, if you don't know the laws and if you don't know how to negotiate commissions, then uh, someone that's very experienced uh, will get that listing, right? And there, and I've seen agents take listings right now, one and a half percent, believe it or not, right? But you just got to know your value. If you know your value and you're not scared about comparing yourself to other people, you could probably walk away with 4% or 4.5% from that listing today, especially in today's climate, right? So I, I would say uh, not comparing yourself to other people, especially in this climate, because it's very it's very easy to fall in that that pigeonhole. like, hey, man, I think I might quit real estate because we're comparing ourselves to other people. And that's what uh, turns ourself against ourself. Yeah. Um, lots of lots of nuggets. I, I hope you guys are making notes. If not, you're going to watch the recordings afterwards for sure. Uh, I love that. Um, you know, in the, in the lines of what you said as well, um, I think that, um, um, again, it, it's so important to have uh, that self-belief, that it's a, it's a skill that you you know keep developing, and of course people that will support it, uh, because I've seen more people that, uh, for example, someone like you and I, and that's why we vibe really well as well, uh, will believe more in others than they believe in themselves. Hey man, you know, and, and when you're selfless, guys, it always comes back to you. To be honest with you, you know, um, I, I I you know I talk with my wife sometimes, you know, for the past four years, I'm like. You know, I, I think back and sometimes I get those moments. I'm not going to lie. I'm human just like everyone else. I said, you know, why did I even waste my time building a brokerage, you know, and why I do that? You know, I could have fed into my own business. But the way my wife says it is you got to understand each person's strengths. You've, you've been through every scenario on the transaction. I've seen a lot of agents get sued. Uh, I've seen people get listings. I've seen people get rejected in listings. So I look at it as going to university for the past four years of my life. Right. I don't look at it as loss anymore because yep. I'm looking all these scenarios that I wouldn't normally see. Oh, I've seen a client go go to our office want to beat somebody up. I've seen it all, right? So I've seen every single thing you could think about in the in real estate industry, right? I've seen people excel from zero transactions to 36 transactions in one year. I've seen it all. And also seen people quit the industry because like the lack of self-belief. So hindsight, uh, you know, the, it was a great four years at Cobalt Banker. I don't regret a moment of it and uh, looking forward to doing more things with this family here. Yeah, you know, a lot of um, the experience, well, all the experience come from the journey, right? So like you mentioned earlier, like sometimes you look at the person and say like, oh my God, she's, how, how is she doing it? You know, and it can be sometimes, well, both inspiring and frustrating, right? To get to that level, but you have to, that's where you need to be curious and ask, hey, what's your story? Tell me more about how did you, you know, get to that place uh, or, or what you do today? And, and you're going to hear, I mean, it's never going to be a, a, a beautiful, easy, you know, magical fairy tale story. It's going to be a lot of um, challenges, ups and downs all the time. I'll tell you about a story about that. This kind, of, this can resonate. So, I'm very good friends with the number one agent, Anthony Manzon, in San Diego. Like, uh, you guys can look him up. Uh, he was essentially a break dancer on the pier in San Diego, making the most money he ever made was five thousand dollars per year, right? Break dancing off the pier. Um, he had a lot of pressure on him, right? I think sometimes we, when we say that term, pressure, pressure builds diamonds. This guy was going to get married in six months, wasn't even in real estate yet, right? So he joined the KW down in San Diego. And uh, all he did was he just stuck to one thing and being consistent, right? He didn't even have a business card yet, right? So he had to Photoshop his face on a, uh, on a figure that had a suit on already, right? He had an open house he had to do that weekend. So within six months... This guy, Anthony Manzon, you guys can look him up on Google, was able to do, I would say, 12 transactions within uh, six months, became rookie of the year. The next year, he broke 250 GCI. Last year, I think his team did 1.7 in GCI. And it's all, you know, it's all mindset at the end of the day, right? He had a goal. Uh, he had things to actually, I, we always say why we have our why. His why was his wife. His why was he had to pay for a wedding. I think his wedding bill was, I think, $45,000. And he had pressure on them, right? So sometimes we need that that benchmark of what we need to do and, and put that that pressure. Sometimes we need pressure, right? Sometimes we need an alarm clock or like a, a countdown, right? So in Anthony's case, you know, it was all come to, coming down to his why. And he needed pressure. So sometimes we need someone like, a, like an accountability partner to say, hey, Anthony, or hey, Manny, you got to do this, man, by this time. 
So Anthony did it on a high level, and uh, this is coming from someone who had no experience in real estate before, and he came from the KW Olive Tree, right? He came from that branch, and uh, that's why, you know, I'm, I'm very respectful to the KW brand, and uh, there's so many tools here, and I experienced firsthand last year at Mega Camp, and, uh, you know, just seeing the environment here that Manny built, this culture, that, this amazing culture that everyone's willing to help everybody, and I, I say that with respect, not many offices have that, and we have a true gem here. Uh, KW Coastal. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, and it's a true, 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 true statement and uh, uh, represent all the uh, the people that are part of it. Right. Uh, you said um, uh, the uh, about pressure and diamonds. So, we, you know, in, in our lingo, we say no pressure, no diamonds. That's one of the, the bold laws. When you take bold, that's B-O-L-D. That's one of the, the seminars that uh, uh, we do once a year. <clears throat> at KW, it's like a Buffini or, uh, you know, one of those like uh, coaching sessions. And, you know, when people ask me, um, what, what's your why? I say, why not? Right. So you have to have the audacity just to uh, aim for whatever you want to aim and, and say, like, why not? I, I, I deserve it like everybody else. Right? We all deserve success. Yeah, we all deserve success. Yeah. You know, we all deserve to be happy. We all deserve to have goals. Right. Um, we all deserve to to have achieve success. Everyone's here is old success, but we have to put action and uh, you know without action you, you and you don't have motivation and you don't have like a goal, it, it won't go anywhere. But you need massive action to achieve everything. And that's one thing I noticed about you uh, throughout the years, Anthony, is that you're you you're setting goals or a goal doesn't matter what either way, right? And and then you're consistently building up towards that. You 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 know, and it's a, there's, there's a way to do it, right? It's not that doesn't have to be that complicated. You just have to be, um, um, uh, you know, as passionate and as obligated, and and uh, uh, self-discipline, which easier again when you have people around you that will go like like you mentioned, holding you accountable. Accountability is the key to maximize your potential, right? Yeah, accountability can be anybody. It could be your wife. It could be your cousin. It could be your teammate at, at KW. Uh, it could be me. Like, if you want to reach out and you don't have one, I'll, I'll be more than happy to keep you accountable. This is a team. This is a family. And uh, if I didn't have an accountability partner, believe me, if I didn't have my wife, I probably wouldn't be as uh, be sitting here with you guys today. Like, she's a, she's my main backbone to what I do today. And uh, and be, having the right partner, guy, guys, means everything, right? Because... Uh, your partner, uh, I don't know about you guys, but it can make or break you, you know, and I'm lucky enough to have someone that believes in me and, you know, wakes up with encouragement and, and keeps me accountable, you know, and she'll tell the truth, right? If I'm slacking, she'll, she'll tell me, right? And if, if I'm wearing something ugly like this shirt, she'll tell me too, but she's still, she's still <laughs> so she's right there. But uh, yeah, you got to have someone that's honest with you, you know, because uh, you don't need more yes mans, you know, if you have a yes person that, that will just say yes to everything you're doing. That's also something that could be a kryptonite to your business. Hey, shout out to your wife. And you just earned dinner tonight. So it's a good job with that. Uh, she's MVP. She, she, no, she's, she's incredible. Um, one more question for you is, uh, it's a day-to-day, -day, it's a lifestyle, a lot of pressure, moving pieces. You're not just a solo person. You, you, you're accountable. You're responsible for so many other people. And um, how do you reset? Like what, what kind of, um, uh, what besides that, lifestyle that this you know passion you do to uh you know ground yourself or relax well I, I try to tie my business business into something that i love and um you know and i, I encourage everyone this on the zoom is to kind of like you know i know that our our business sometimes can seem redundant and kind of like the same thing and you know hey we're just selling homes or or we're you know we're trying to list homes it's not really like that you know and there's so many superstars on the Zoom right now that I can identify that does things at a high level, but they also do it when they love it, right? So just tie in your business with something that you love. If you're a community-based leader or if you're a PTA member or anything of that sort, tie your business into organization, right? And use social media as your weapon to counteract whatever it's, what's going on with other agents, right? So if you're a agent that loves being in the community, Guess what? That is your strongest strength, right? To 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 be accountable, number one, because you, number one, you're helping your community. You, you wake up with that with that mindset. Hey, listen, I gotta close deals. I gotta shine for my community, right? So there's so many things you could do. You can collab with different businesses, right? Uh, you like, for example, yesterday I left um, an appointment with a law firm. They're a divorce attorney, right? One of the biggest ones in Pasadena, and I shot a free commercial with them, right? 
And the reason behind that is because I'm just trying to plan my 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 business for the next two or three years because I'm resetting my business in many senses. So I'm saying to myself, who do I want to align with right now? Okay, probate attorneys, divorce attorneys, sports entertainment, and also being an elite referral agent, right, with all agents across KW. So the reason why I bring up the divorce attorney is, hey, it doesn't cost him anything if I want to shoot a free commercial or co-brand with him, right? And guess what? When he thinks about who can I use as a realtor right now, they're probably going to tap on myself or my team because I, I gave them value without asking for anything, right? And I think the biggest thing is like for agents, we're, we're too aggressive. We ask for the business right away without knowing the right way to do it. If we do it with a not intentful, we're, hey, give me that business as opposed to let me be your partner. Let me... Let me come in. If you have a question about how to sell this home when they're in a tough divorce, I'm here as a resource, right? But you got to give them value. And I say this with respect to everyone uh, in our industry is I feel like a lot of the agents are commission breath uh, uh, when they wake up with that. And I think people, clients can see that, especially other business partners too. So I, I say this, if you can find a business or community to run with, and that could be your pillar and your motivation, it will never be a job to you because you love what you do, right? And once you love what you do, you're going to go hard 24-7. And that's how I've seen different agents go from zero to 100 real quick. And it's such a game changer, right? It's a, it's a, it's a really life-changing um, mindset. It's a mind shift. When you have that, um, then, you know, literally sky, sky's the limit, right? And beyond. Uh, to really fulfill the potential and above, as I mentioned earlier.